Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video we've got something that you've all been waiting for me to review and that is the HHKB. This is the professional classic and let's just say this thing cost me over $200 on mechanicalkeyboards.com but ever since that last Topre video I've been getting a lot of requests or at least I can say I got a lot of hate on that uh, Niz Plum versus Real Force TKL comparison but you guys said that you know you don't really experience Topre unless you use a HHKB. So here we are, HHKB in hand. Let's jump into the review. Hey guys, this is Betty and I have an HHKB today. I was using this as my main keyboard for a really long time. Not like my main main all day long because that's impossible because I don't have arrow keys. I don't hate the way they do arrow keys on this board, but I don't like it either. So I did have another board that I switched between, but I use this for a long, long, long time compared to the amount of time that I take to test other boards. And you guys might not like this review. So let's just jump into it, shall we? What's in the box? So in the box, you have very few things. You have the keyboard itself, of course. It's relatively lightweight. I measured it and it's about one pound, three ounces or something like that, 500 something grams. I'm not too versed in the gram category, but you wanted to uh, get that measurement. So that's what we have. We also have several different manuals, a bunch of different manuals. The most important one is actually one of the user manuals. And then we also have the USB-C cable. It ends in a right angle connector here which I think is really awkward no matter what way I plug it into my keyboard it's still going to have that right angle and then another right angle going to the back and then into my PC so it's just a strange shape for a USB-C cable why not just have the straight one I don't use this one I use a straight cable that just goes straight into the hole on the back of the board and that's pretty much all that's in the box we just got a lot of paper USB-C cable and that keyboard there's no keycap puller, no nothing. Uh, that's it. All right, so it's time to go into build quality. Like I said before, this thing weighs a little bit over one pound. It's very, very, very lightweight. The build is all plastic. When I say all plastic, I mean all plastic. There is no aluminum plate like there usually is. It's just an all plastic build. It's really lightweight. I had someone try it out who pretty much doesn't know anything about keyboards at all. And they were like, why is this thing so radly and and loud and like typing on an earthquake. So that's not coming from me guys, coming from someone who doesn't know what Topra is, who has no idea how much this thing costs. It honestly, it feels flimsy, but the back is pretty impressive. On the back, we have four heavy duty rubber feet. They are thick, they are textured, and your keyboard is going nowhere. We also have dip switches that is covered by a plastic plate. I've never seen it being covered before in any other board. So I think that's a little bit cool. And then you also have dual angle adjustable kickstands as well. I love how they're recessed into the board so they don't really stick out. But at the same time, that means that they're a little bit deceptive in what height they're actually going to give you. The small kickstand barely gives you any raise in angle and the larger kickstand gives you a little bit more. The sticker here in the back tells you exactly what the dip switches do when they're in the on and off position. So you don't need to keep the manual with you or even remember what the manual tells you everything is in the back here and the manual will tell you like sub legends and stuff but everything's here on the keycaps as well so even if you lose that manual don't fret too badly from the side this keyboard basically looks like a brick with keycaps popping out of them and i like the look i like the recess switches look i don't like floating keycaps to be honest this keyboard looks extremely clean on the top left here you have the USB C port that's just flush with the board and that would make more sense with a straight USB-C cable. And the top here on the keyboard you have the branding on it. It says HHKB Professional Classic and I think that looks really clean. I do have the black legends on black keycaps on black keyboard so it can be a little bit difficult to see everything which is one of the major problems that I had here but that's sort of my fault. There's other solutions that we can use to get around here such as just buying 
buying new keycaps or buying the white version with black legends. The bottom left and right corners are empty and that's what makes this a classic HHKB layout. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the keycaps. The HHKB uses a step sculpture to profile and it's similar to OEM in some ways. It's sculpted and it feels really good to type on. I don't have any complaints with it at all. In a really well-lit room such as right now with the light pointing directly on the board, it's really easy to see all of the die sub legends on the keycap but in dim lighting because they're black legends on a black keyboard it gets really hard to see exactly what I'm typing and the hardest part is actually typing the sub legends or the secondary function because it's really hard to see where anything is usually I'm just like oh, okay where's delete where's delete oh, okay where's up arrow okay and then eventually I'll start to memorize a few of those things which I did which made it a little bit easier but I still had to go and raise my board up to my face and it just it got a little bit annoying so some solutions you can do is that you can just replace the keycaps and that's gonna cost about $50 if you buy the sets on KBD fans one downside that I have to doing that is that this keyboard already is so expensive and now I'm dropping $50 on top of that to replace the keycaps so I really should have just bought the white version so that's my fault we're gonna talk about the HHKB layout changes some of you may already know this and really like it to other people this could be a little bit outside the norm and be a little bit difficult to get used to so uh, instead of caps lock wherever caps lock is you now have control so that takes a while to get used to because remember the bottom left has nothing in it so there can't be a control there so your caps lock is now control and alongside that your backslash is now delete so many of you who see my typing test know that I already use backslash as delete so that wasn't too much to get used to where backspace was is now split into two one u keys one is backslash and the other is the tilde key you also have the fn and there's only one of them on the board at the bottom right right next to the small shift here and that gets pretty easy to use and it makes it easy to use the arrow keys when it comes to that you have your alt on the bottom row and they're non-standard sizes however if you buy a topre keycap set it's gonna match everything in this layout appropriately you also have secondary media functions on this board by pressing fn and asd and f for volume down volume up mute and eject appropriately and you also have all of your nav cluster keys on the cluster keys around j the arrow keys are relatively easy to access as well on left bracket colon apostrophe and the question mark so pretty easy access there on the top you have the function row in your secondary layer and then for insert and delete you have the keys above backspace the keycaps themselves are very tight on the board to take them off you have to do you know give it a pretty appropriate level of force to yank off and then to put them back in they'll snap loudly back in so make sure you hear that snap before you move on to the next keycap so the switches these are the Topre 45 gram switches I know I know I really should try the silent ones but guess what I like can't afford it so we've tried the 55 grams now we're doing the 45 grams and they're still pretty loud of course they are they're not silent one thing that I really have against Topre switches I think is that for them to be at the top of their game they should be lubed and silenced and I'm not sure how I feel about taking something like this apart because it's so expensive what if I mess it up what if I lose a spring lose something I'm bound to lose something so Someday I will try a silent version and you know, maybe that might not come, maybe that will. But as it is right now in its all stock form of glorious over $200 price tag, I don't enjoy the way it sounds. I do like the way it feels though. The, the bump is quite nice and it's quite tactile, but the way that it sounds is just very rattly and each key just feels like the keycaps are sliding on top really loudly. And I'm just not a fan of that, especially after all of those reviews that I've done of mechanical keyboards where I'm like if you're just gonna buy one like just buy this one and you'll be done with it this keyboard doesn't feel like that it feels like I need to buy the, the better one the better HHKB and how would I know that I need the better one if never tried the less better one so it, there's there's some complications here especially with the logic the spacebar is especially loud the spacebar is the only only keycap to have actual stabilizers underneath and underneath this one there's also a spring to make it a little bit heavier as well it's still very loud you'll see that at the end but i'll give you a quick 
sound test of the stabilizer on the spacebar. The other big keys, the left shift and enter, they don't really have stabilizers underneath. They just have the regular toper switch, but they sound perfectly fine. Alongside that, the spacebar also has two rubber rise pads underneath as well to do some sound dampening, but it's still pretty loud. I'm gonna include the typing test right now. So what's the verdict on this and how do I feel about the HHKB? I do like typing on it. For the long time that I was using it, I enjoyed it. It's just, I got tired of how it felt to not be able to have that satisfying bottom out, really nice feeling. So I had to switch to my other boards occasionally from time to time. For a board that's over 200, I, I believe it was 230 or 240 or something like that. For a board this expensive to not satisfy me as my primary driver, I wouldn't recommend purchasing it. I would rather just build an affordable custom from KBD fans or something like that, or get a Varmillo board or even the Echo 3068 board. And that would have been more satisfying for me. It feels flimsy to use, it's loud. I would have to mod it to achieve what people want me to achieve with it. And I would have to spend more money to get replacement keycaps. So maybe next year I'll get my hands on a silent 45 gram Tilbury board and then I'll get to compare all the three different Tilbury switches. But until then, currently I don't like Tilbury. Will that change next year? Honestly, I have no idea. But you'll just have to wait until then. I'll have to wait as well. For now, this is just what we're left with. This is going back in the box and then I'll use it again next year. The links are down below if you want to check out the HHKB on Mechanical keyboards.com. I'll also link you to the video where I compared a Tilbury board versus a Tilbury clone board right here. Uh, feel free to dislike that video if you want to. Honestly, everything's my opinion. So you do you and I'll do me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.